Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m., Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In this quick hit, Gene Simmons from KISS tears up the contract of a band he discovered in 1976. They would go on to be rock and roll legends. Who were they? And why was the contract ripped up? Also, it only happened once, but I'll have the story of two actors winning an Academy Award for playing the same role. We'll be right back. You're listening to a 3324 podcast quick hit with Dean Legiro, where Dean shares stories and trivia about his favorite chart hits, actors, movies, and more. My name is Dean, and welcome to this week's 3324 quick hit. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at 3324podcast and Twitter at 3324p. So it would be great if you could follow us there, and you'll get all the most up-to-date information on new episodes and a bunch of other fun stuff we have going on. So let's jump in for our first story. We have to take a trip back to 1976. The group KISS had it all. An army of loyal fans, incredible stage shows. They were taking pyrotechnics and stage presence to the next level. 1976 for KISS also saw not one, but two albums. In March, Destroyer would be released with the hits Detroit Rock City, Beth, and Shout It Out Loud driving record sales and becoming concert staples for them. Rock and Roll Over would be released in November of the same year with Hard Luck Woman and Calling Dr. Love as the highlights from that release. We will pick up the story in October of that year. The New York-based group was in Hollywood to perform three songs for Paul Lynn's Hollywood special, which aired on the ABC network. Legendary L.A. disc jockey Rodney Bingenheimer invited Gene Simmons out to a local club to hear a few local bands play. Simmons accepted the invite and then the VIP section of the Starwood Club attended the show, partying with the L.A. elites while the bands played. One band in particular caught Gene's ear, and he immediately had to see what was going on. The lead singer had the audience in his hand with his acrobatics and stage antics, while the guitar player was doing things unheard of at the time on the instrument. By the third song, Gene Simmons was backstage waiting for the group to finish their set. Upon meeting them, he was ready to start working with them and offered to produce their demo. He flew the group out to Electric Lady Studios in New York and signed them to his Man of a Thousand Faces company. The original plan was to record a 24-track demo, but 15 tracks came out of the sessions and Gene was excited for the prospects of this new dynamic group from California. Gene presented the demos to KISS manager Bill Alcoin and the rest of KISS also, but the reaction was less than stellar with the general attitude towards the group as being, so what? Really even less than lukewarm. It appeared that they just didn't hear what had Gene Simmons so enraptured. Not wanting to tie up the group in a contract that would go nowhere, Gene tore it up and released the band from their obligations to Man of a Thousand Faces. The group was also given the tapes of the demos they worked so hard on and allowed them to seek their fortunes elsewhere. The band wouldn't have to wait long for their number to finally come up, as they were signed to Warner Brothers Records in 1977 and would record their debut album at Sunset Sound Studios starting in September of the same year. Very little overdubbing was done on the album, and even some mistakes were left in to give the album a live feel. Upon release, the album went to number 19 on the Billboard charts, quite impressive for a debut album from an unknown band. But listeners could hear something different in the grooves of this album guitar as it had never been played before, and a lead singer with a swagger that would make him one of the best frontmen in rock and roll. Over the course of their recording career, they would sell over 80 million albums worldwide and would become icons of rock and roll. Who was this band that almost didn't make it? You know them as Alex, Michael, Eddie, and David, the mighty Van Halen. Next up, we've got the story of how two actors won Oscars for playing the same exact character. And we're not talking about the Joker. I'll be right back. (music) 
Winning an Academy Award is a high watermark for an actor or actress. It signals that they have arrived and they have put to film a performance that is truly unique and memorable. Well, maybe not so unique. There was one instance where two actors won Oscars for playing the same exact character. And as I mentioned in the intro, it's not Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix for their portrayal of the Joker, as those were actually two different characters that had the same name. Let's go back to March of 1972, with the release of a film based on a 1969 novel that would go on to become the highest grossing film of that year and the highest grossing film of all time for a short period. The film had its share of problems in pre-production, most notably in finding a director to tackle the project. With the director finally secured, casting was the next challenge, as the lead role was vital to the success of the project. At the time, Marlon Brando was not a bankable star by any means. His last few films were flops, and he was developing a reputation as being somewhat hard to work with. Originally rejected as a choice, Marlon Brando was eventually chosen to play Don Vito Corleone and Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather. The film was a blockbuster right out of the gate, and ticket prices were even bumped up from $3 to $3.50 at the time to capitalize on the increased theatergoers. Prices in New York were increased to $4, and showings were maxing out at up to seven times per day. Come Oscar season, The Godfather received 11 nominations and would go on to win three. Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Picture, and Marlon Brando would win his second Best Actor Award. He famously and controversially refused to accept the award in protest of the depiction of Native Americans in TV and film, but he won nevertheless. Striking while the iron was hot, principal photography began on Godfather 2 in October of 1973, and it would be released to the public in December of 1974. The accolades matched and even sometimes exceeded that of the first film. Robert De Niro has been delighting audiences for over 50 years now, but in 1974, he was still relatively unknown. His big break would come with his portrayal of Johnny Boy in Martin Scorsese's crime drama Mean Streets the year before. De Niro was cast to play the younger Vito Corleone, revealing the origin and motivations of this compelling character. Also nominated for 11 Oscars, Godfather 2 would clean up winning for Best Director and Best Picture, making it the first and only time a film and its sequel would take home Oscar gold. On the acting front, Al Pacino was nominated for Best Actor, but he would lose to Art Carney for his performance in Harry and Tonto. Along with Robert De Niro, Lee Strasberg and Michael V. Gazzo were nominated for their work on Godfather 2, but Bobby D. would take the trophy home, cementing his place in movie trivia history. De Niro would take the Best Actor Award home in 1980 for his work in Scorsese's Raging Bull. So there you have it. Take one role, add two iconic actors, sprinkle a bit of movie magic in, and you have the perfect recipe to make Oscar history. Thank you for joining me on this 3324 Quick Hit. My name is Dean. And we will see you on the flip side. This has been a 3324 Podcast Quick Hit. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so please make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 